So I want to take a look at Megascan and Renderman. So Megascan for you who doesn't know is a material library. So we can see here if I go to library, it's um, textures that's uh, synced. It's, it's a really good resource. So I'm going to take a look at how we can use that in Renderman now without uh, actually having to go into a texture program or anything. I left off this here with textures. I'm actually gonna just scrap everything here as well. So we just have a shader and let's fire up an IPR. And here we have it. So yeah, it's a shader without textures. Park this over here temporarily. We need a multi-texture node. So this node is made, uh, you can uh, have different uh, textures. We also need a node called Pixar round cube. So that's like a, um, in uh, Mari, for example, we have three plan on projection. That's the equivalent. So I tab and uh, start to type PXR round cube. So this is a manifold to uh, tile the textures. And um, also uh, you need a texture. So I have uh, prepared it. So for you who doesn't know how to prepare textures, I'm gonna link to a video up now where we deal with textures and that. So I have already prepared it, so yeah, just a refresh. You pick a directory where you have your textures you wanna convert and uh, yeah, I usually use the clear all cache and it starts to uh, convert them. So I'm gonna pipe here my uh, directory. So I wanna just use the albedo here. So in Megascan, you have like albedo, roughness, um, displacement and everything. So let's now just hook up this tileable texture here. It's like a rock texture to uh, the multi-texture. I'm gonna hit the three button to expand uh, this node so I can see everything. So I just want to result RGB to the diffuse here. And that should hook this up. Let's isolate this so we can see. And also here, um, the texture from Megascan, there's different um, subscriptions and the one I had uh, subscribed to didn't uh, supply EXRs, it was just JPEGs, but there are different ranges. So in my case here, it's a, it has a gamma encoded, so I have to hit the linearize button. And now it's uh, linearized and it looks okay to my screen here. First off the bat, it applies here, but as you see here, there is no, uh, I can start to play here with the uh, stuff here, nothing happens. And that's because this uh, multi-texture really need a manifold. And a manifold is a way to control how the texture is applied. So this round cube here is a manifold that's made to uh, for this purpose. So re if I take this result multi into the manifold here, it's switched there temporarily. You can see that something happened. Uh, and I can now start to play with this. For example, if I take the frequency here, we can see, can start to dial how uh, repeated it's gonna be. We can uh, scale it different axis here. If we have X, Y, and Z, that's similar to Mario as well. It's more like you have like a front side and a top plane and it projects it so you can start to mess with different um, um, axes here. I'm gonna treat it globally right now. You can say random flip, random offset. Yeah, so there's a different way to randomize your textures. Let's apply uh, some saturation and luminance. You can see here if we wanna do something. Yeah, so that's um, a way to apply that. Zoom in so now we can see it retains um, the resolution because it's it's gonna take it from uh, the texture rather than if it would bake to a texture it's always gonna be uh, like in my case I think it's 4k so let's say that we want to now actually have uh, the roughness and uh, bump or something so we need a few more Pixar multi texture we need one per uh, so this one take um, roughness and we have the roughness and this one we want to go to specular roughness there we go so we can now disable here so i solo this to see the, the the texture on its own so let's disable solo so we can start to see 
what's happening there. Let's zoom in. Let's disable roughness just to see it temporarily. And then you see, it. yeah, that's the roughness. Hook it back, specular roughness. And let's add a bump as well and see what happens. Okay, so we need to hook up the manifold to this one so we have the same manifold going to all of our multi texture nodes. So this one, uh, let's take a Pixar bump manifold, take it to result normal into the bump normal here on the shader. So it's gonna bump everything. I want just result or there you go this one to bump i'm not sure if bump is still supported to be hooked up uh, interactively sometimes um, i have to refresh still so yeah there we can see the bump is applied so now we have uh, material so now if i would start now here to actually tweak the round cube so that's the like the parameters for the tiling and everything we can see that how that's gonna affect this. So now it's repeated less on the surface. Let's set this to one, repeat it more. Yeah, you get a drift. So what I could do now is actually, if I would hook this up to a uh, material, uh, like I'll blend this, I could have like moss on top surfaces with other patterns. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of that. So I'm gonna pause this and come back when I've set it up. And we're back. New clothes, new couch. So um, yeah, here's uh, a setup. So I'm gonna dissect this a bit now. So what I've done here, I hooked up another set of materials here, called, like the moss here. So it's the same here. I have albedo, roughness and bump, and actually graded the, the color here temporarily. You can see it's quite a big scale. So let's remedy that. Let's set this to three times or something and see what happens. Just uh, scale uh, the, the moss layer here. So I used um, like a bake uh, occlusion uh, map to uh, level uh, to make like a mask for this. So this mask here is driving uh, how I apply the moss. It's actually a uh, texture I baked out from uh, Mori, it's uh, this like a curvature occlusion, different levels here. So um, I just treated it, I leveled it, inverted it actually. So I took this one, if I go back here and take a look, this one, and I graded it, inverted it with this color correct. So I pumped up the exposure just to crank it up, and then I say output minimax, essentially just reversing. So I have a layer blend here. If I want to break this mask up, I have layers to do that or add more procedurals on top. So at the moment it's just a pass through node because I just used the, the, the layer here, the base layer. If I wanted I could start here. So uh, let's say I enable seven here, it's gonna override. Let's say that I wanna screen here for example. If I wanna add some general moss on top of everything for example, I can do it here. Let's say that I want to do like that. Let's see what happens if I now toggle this off here. So the, now if I would crank this up to one here, for example, it will be completely covering everything with moss. And uh, yeah, so this becomes more like a slider. I can have more or less set it to zero here. It's going to be just the curvature driving this. Yeah, so that's a way. So what I would do in uh, a production shot, I would probably have a few procedurals uh, leveling this and a few ramps as well to dictate like maybe more uh, moss towards the base here and stuff like that. Also here, this is where I actually blend. So I, I have a blend node here. Let's look at uh, the, the texture here by itself. This blend node here, if I hit uh, the three buttons, so I have uh, the base. Uh, coming in here, the bottom is the stone uh, tile here. The top here is, is this one, the moss by itself. And I use the mask, this moss then to dig away with the alpha there. So that's how it is. So I have one of these for each of my, uh, this is the diffuse. This one will be the roughness. 
and this one will be the bump there. So yeah, and they are all dr driven by the same mask. So that's a basic way you can use um, procedural breakup and uh, this run cube with the, the mega scan library. And this is usually something for environments. This is heavily used, uh, this type of techniques, because you don't want to paint everything. You want to do as much as you can procedurally driven. And uh, yeah, so um, you've probably seen this on, for example, Jungle Book and these type of movies where there's a lot of environments. Okay, so that's a quick look here on uh, Random Man 22 and uh, the Mega Scan texture library. And uh, yeah. If you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when I go live or produce one of these tutorials. And yeah, see you on the channel. Bye bye.